Well, the screens all tell me, and so it's got to be true because I read it on the internet. We're live, baby. We are live, and it is Monday night. Monday night live. Not nearly as funny as Saturday night live. Certainly not in its day. Got to be honest with you, I uh, can't remember the last time I watched Saturday Night Live. Um, but a lot of a lot of good talents come through there, so you know they're doing something right. I do listen to a bunch of podcasts that involve former Saturday Night Live people, and I got to tell you, one of my very favorite things is hearing a former Saturday Night Live person uh, or an outside of podcasts, just in life, hearing former Saturday Night Live people uh, impersonate Lauren Michaels. I think this is hilarious. Um, uh, what's his name? Um, why, why am I blanking on on Seth? Uh, oh, come on. Help me out here. Internet? Anybody? There's a couple of people watching. Somebody help me out. What's his name? Not Seth Green. Not Seth Rogen. Seth Myers. Got it. You didn't have to help me, Internet. I got there myself. He has a hilarious story that the last sketch that he ever wrote for Saturday Night Live, it was his last episode. Um, and... Uh, I can't remember who the actress was comedian. Um, but anyway, uh, the point was there, it was some sketch and like, she was supposed to be eating chicken wings and ostensibly the wings were for sharing, but she just kept eating them. Um, and apparently the bit was bombing. Like it was just death and, uh, and it was awful. And, and Seth Myers wasn't in it. He'd written it, but he was standing, you know, off stage or whatever. And he was with Lauren Michaels. And, and so this bit's just dead. Like it's just no one's laughing. No one's having fun. The the performers hated it. Everybody was having a terrible time. And apparently Lauren Michaels turned to Seth Myers and said, what am I going to do without you? Which is funny, right? <laughs> Understatement. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. Hey, I'm just finishing a beer. It's a Canuck. It's delicious. I bought this as a prop for our church's Christmas nativity. I don't want to give too much away, but I'm going to tell you, you might be surprised with the gifts the Magi bring to Jesus. You might also be surprised to find that two of the Magi are not wise men, but wise women. So, you know, Anglicans, we're progressive, guys. Anyway, let me just finish this one second. Mm -mm -mm. Incidentally, purchased from Castro's Lounge, my beloved. Try and buy your beer from a bar if you can support them. It's more expensive. It would be cheaper if you bought it at the LCBO. That's because the LCBO doesn't offer bars and restaurants wholesale pricing, which is stupid. But what are you going to do? Uh, that's where we're at. But that's, again, not what we're here to talk about. I'll maybe go on a semi-political rant towards the end of this, but let's leave that for now. Let's get down to business. I got my business socks on. That's how you know it's time for business. I'm wearing my business socks. I'm not. They're just my regular socks. It's a funny bit, though. Uh, hey, well, the votes are in. And y'all agreed with me. So tonight, we are drinking. I'm drinking. I hope you're drinking. Well, I don't know. I haven't had it yet. What if it's terrible? Then I hope you're not drinking it. But you know what? I know Little Beast's better than that. It's going to be Bolts. Balder. I hope I'm saying that right. Baldir, Baldir, Roller. This is a word with uh, five letters and conspicuous only one of them is a vowel. And it's the second one. Anyway, Baldir, which as noted, now I have read the label here, kids, but I had to to figure out which one was which. And it doesn't give me a lot of information, so don't worry. This is an imperial saison oh, with peaches. That's one nice... Oh. That's nice. It's like settling into a warm bath, isn't it? Peaches aged in Chardonnay barrels. Well, who just put some delicious bath oil in that bath that I'm relaxing into? Because it just got better. Oh, hello, craft beer cons. Nice to see you here. Um, if you join in once I'm flowing, you're going to get talked about, just to warn you. So you either got to get on that or or, or you're going to get centered out. Anyway, um, what were we talking about? Little Beast's Baldir Imperial Saison with peaches aged. We said Blanc, right? No, Chardonnay. Pardon me. Chardonnay barrels. I'm hugging it. I'm so excited about this. And it's been sitting in my fridge taunting me all week. All week. Taunting. There's been voices 
now there hasn't. Anyway, uh, obviously, if you're watching the video, that's a bomber. It's a 500 mil. It's a, we'll call that a bomber. It's a big model. It's got a cap. Ready? Can you hear the... I can see waveforms. I think you can hear it. Got a bottle opener. Church key, if you like to call it that. Here we go. Well, it didn't spew out all over me, which is nice, because I certainly wasn't being gentle with it. And, you know, in a, a rare nicety... I do have a little beast's glass and it's sort of, I think this is a Teku glass, Tiku. I'm not sure how you say it. This is a very beer geeky glass. Uh, if you're watching the videos, you can see what I mean. It does not look like a sex toy or a bong. I'd like to put that out there, or at least not typically. Maybe you have a sex toy that looks like this. I don't want to yuck your yum, but I don't know. I don't know where you're putting that. Um, also don't know how you'd use it as a bong. It's just a nice looking glass. They're very angular. So if you're listening to the podcast, sorry, it's a bit like a wine glass in shape, but it's got a very defined, uh, the widest point has quite a notable angle to it. And then it, it's, it's quite straight sided. Um, so it's kind of, it's, it's, it's quite angular. Let's go with angular. It's like a wine glass, but angular. And then it's got this slightly fluted top to it. I like it. I like it. Good looking piece of glassware. It's got a, um, a typical rimmed, um, top very thin rim it's not pronounced a laser cut is super nice although can be dangerous um this is a safety bet and then the other thing is these are more durable laser cut glasses have a tendency if you bump it to <laughs> explode that's not what you want oh hi my beloved erica always joins in late but i'll wave at you my love um Anyway, I got a Little Beast glass, which I like a lot. So we're going to drink out of that. Um, this glass will not fit half of that, I'm sure. Especially with a glass like this, kids, if you're listening at home and you want to know about using beer glassware, when you're drinking out of a wine-style glass, some people call it a, a goblet or a chalice. I like to think of it as a wine-style glass. Like a wine, don't fill it to the top. For one, I mean, you want a bit of head at the top anyway. Don't we all want a bit of head? on our beer. What were you thinking about? Dirty dogs. Um, but you want a little bit of space to move it around. You want some space for evaporation of the alcohol to happen. You can, you know, so we're not going to fill this all the way. I am now going to fill it though. Um, on camera, if I, if I play my cards, right, I will end up with no beer on my crotch and all the beer I want in my glass. So let's, let's see if I can do this. Here we go. It's on both cameras, bit of Foley. I got, oh, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, there we go. I got the label and the glass facing the right direction. I'm literally not looking at the glass. I'm looking at the screen. We'll call that good right there. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Put that bottle somewhere safe so I don't knock it over. If you're looking at the camera, look what I did. Okay, it's a little above the widest point on the glass. And I know if you're pouring a glass of wine, typically you're aiming for the widest point of the glass. That is not just a style point. There's a functional reason for that. And the same would be true of this beer, but I wanted to drink a little bit more and not have to report. it. So I am fine with a little bit of, of, of extra. Now I did not give myself much head here. What, why do you guys keep laughing? Stop. Um, this as an Imperial Saison would typically be a beer that could pour with a very generous head. I bet I can whip one up, whip up a little head. Seriously, guys, seriously, stop. There we go. I'm not even going to say it. I'm going to say there is an ample amount of foam on the top of this beer because you guys are terrible. Do your parents know you think that way? Um, functionally, why do we want the, 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 like the beer to go to the widest point and not higher or lower? Well, again, when we're talking about, um, concentrating smells and stuff, if you have the widest possible surface area of the beer, and then it, it, it narrows upwards the way that a chalice or a goblet or indeed a wine glass uh, would do. What happens now is that whole surface area is releasing aromatics. We call them smells. Hello, Stormstead. Um, but then, of course, they bump into the sides of the glass. So you're literally concentrating it. So you're getting a wider amount of evaporation or distribution, if you like, of smells uh, to a smaller point. So you get a, when you sniff it, as I just did, and now I'm really excited and I don't want to talk about glassware anymore, you get a little bit more of a pop to your smell. Speaking of pop in my smell, this smells like peaches and white wine and good golly, I don't want to talk anymore. I want to drink it. So here we go. 
<laughs> well, that's the show tonight, guys. I uh, hope I'll see you next week. I got to go. I got a beer to drink. Woo! That... <laughs> this is something special. I had the Odin last night. I don't know if you remember last week, if you're paying attention. I had to decide between Odin, Freya, and Balder. And uh, because at that point I knew where I was going, I had the Odin last night, and it was nice. That's an Imperial Saison with berries in Cab Sauve barrels. So red winey, very Venice. This is a little different, and I like it a lot. Mm. Okay, what do we got? Peaches? Definitely. Uh, there's definitely peaches in this beer. It is peachy, and in the most delightful way. Um not particularly tart peachy, just sweet, juicy, peachy awesomeness. So right out of the gate, we're we're going places, and I'm happy to be going there. Big Saison. There's um, a nice multi quality to the Saison, but the bigger thing is the yeast. And, and I think we've talked about this, and God help me if we haven't. Saison is a yeast-driven beer. Uh, there are obviously other things involved, but... The thing, what, when I taste something, I go, that tastes like Saison. The thing that's making me think it tastes like Saison, 99% of the time, it's yeast. And it's specifically Saison yeast. Uh, sometimes it's a mix of yeast and like Brettanomyces and stuff. Escarpment makes some magnificent uh, blended yeasts that are a Saison yeast with, uh, with a Brett. Who knows? Maybe that's what's in this one. I might have to give it another smell drink test um but before i do that uh so tons of really attractive um saisons tend to be uh spicy again i always have to say this because i don't know who's listening i don't mean they're picante it's not like last week with the hot sauce it's like your spice cupboard um cloves coriander especially big time white pepper not uncommon sometimes nutmeg or if you want to sound really fancy mace but of course nutmeg and mace are the same thing and they smell the same they just look slightly different um but those types of warm spices is what we're thinking really nice this one white pepper definitely white pepper lovely uh and then chardonnay and oak like i'm not gonna say this is the perfect beer for me because i know y'all know i like my hazy boys i like things a little hoppy i like a good crispy clean boy that's fine too but an imperial saison that's got peaches and and chardonnay and oak i mean i don't want to drink this out of a pint glass after i finish some sort of strenuous outdoor labor in the summer but shortly after the beer that i have when i do that if i were to settle down in a chaise lounge or a hammock with this I'd be fine. The beauty here is despite being fruity and sort of white wine Venice, it's got way more than enough oomph to, uh, to be a winter warmer. It's an Imperial. I don't know. I'm going to look, I, I'm going to guess it's like North of 8% alcohol by volume 8.6. Now it's not hot. It doesn't drink like hits you in the face, but there's definitely a lot of, a lot of, again, oomph. You notice what I'm doing, guys? You remember what word I'm trying not to use? It can be hard when you realize that a phrase you use is just not okay and you need to stop. That's the easy part. The hard part is then programming your brain again. This beer has got a lot of spirit. It's got a lot of... Well, it's not punchy. Punch comes off wrong. This is nice. Balanced, peachy. Oh, saisonny. So good. And tons tons of chardonnay nice chardonnay too i want to know what chardonnay barrel this came out of i'm just gonna look through here now i was hoping maybe aaron or little beast is watching and they would chime in and tell me what kind of barrel it was it's a nice chardonnay barrel so that's something uh sorry i got all sidetracked i'm 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 having a i'm having a ball right now not loose as a goose if any of you are watching, but I'm having a ball. I need to think more about this. Really peachy, like in the best possible way. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. 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 Yeah, I don't think I need to go too much more in depth on this. Nicely, a bit of a tartness, which often happens with a Saison. 
Oh yeah, I was gonna try and think about. That's why I wanted to drink it and think about it a little bit. I was wondering if there was a, a secondary uh, fermentation from like bread or something. Often in a barrel, that can happen, especially if it's a pre-used barrel, not just for wine. Shouldn't wine barrels should not have bread in them. Sometimes they get infected with bread, and then the brewers take them and they like that as long as it's the right kind of bread. Sometimes bread tastes like poo, so you don't want that one. Um, but typically, the the barrels are spent, but they're not infected when breweries get them. Often they then infect them. Um, and that might be the case here. I don't know. I'm trying to see. Hmm. It's an interesting question. One of the things that you can get from Brett is like cherry pie, a nice dry tart kind of cherry quality. I don't think so. I think all I'm getting is peach and Chardonnay, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. The other thing, of course, the thing Brett's famous for is like funk, right? Like barnyard or horse blanket or horse sweat. Again. Hmm. I don't think that's tracking. No, I don't think so. Um, it's not impossible. It's not a, if, if there is um, Brett in there, it, uh, oh, well, interesting. I've just read the ingredients. It doesn't say what kind of yeast was used in it. Um, it does point out there's rye. And you know me and rye in a beer. Seriously, this beer just keeps getting better. There's also wheat. Um, not uncommon in a Saison. Adds a bit of cloudiness, a bit of body. But rye, of course, rye makes beers. Did you say it? Spicy. Um, Stormstead wants to know how many horses I've licked. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Interesting question. I mean, alive horses? Zero. But I've eaten horse. So that's something. But it wasn't sweaty. Tasted like beef, if I'm honest with you. Um, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah, rye. Rye makes beers spicy. And Saison yeast makes beers spicy. I like a little spice in my beer. What can I say? Bim at Godspeed. I'm wearing his shirt right now. Not his shirt, literally. The shirt from his brewery. Be a bit weird if I was wearing his shirt. That would... <laughs> that would... There would be a lot of questions. Anyway, um, he likes a bit of smoke in his beer. That's cool. I uh, I don't want to yuck his yum. I like smoking his beer too, to be honest with you. Uh, but I like a little spice in my beer. Stormstead's pointing out they call it horse blanket. Stormstead, I would like to point out to you that I think horse blanket is what people call it when it's like here and sweat is like when it's up here and then barnyard is up here and then fecal, which obviously is a different strain of bread, different thing. Yeah, rye spices as well. You know what, guys? I'm just going to hang out here and talk to Storm State for a while. So, sorry. Uh, no, I'll try and get back on track. What were we talking about? Rye and beer. Delicious. This one has it. Spices. Love it. Don't think, Brett. There might be a, uh, there might be a bit because um, it's certainly a dry beer. Uh, and especially, again, for a, a Saison that's clocking at 8.6. Now, Saison yeasts often are monsters like for a long long time <laughs> yeah sorry no it's, it's great um for a long time so you're trying to get me to do it for a long time my favorite uh yeast when i homebrewed was 3711 which is french saison from y yeast i'm pretty sure and that thing could take a beer to to sub 1.000 in gravity or one Plato, which is to say that that beer is now less dense than water because it's converted so much of the sugar and added alcohol that now there's no sugar left and there's just water and alcohol and that's less dense than just water. Uh, and it's crazy. So Saison's can be bitingly dry, like, like just dry, 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 dry. And I love them for it. Also, I like my beers dry. Not always. Some beers need to be wet, by the way, is not the opposite of dry in this case. Sweet is what we're looking for here. Um, but I do love a really dry Saison that tastes like Chardonnay with peaches and oak. This is perfect. Anyway, uh, the other thing is Brett 
also does the same thing, dries the crap out of beers, can take them well below one Play-Doh. Um, and so it is possible the dryness is being caused by that. But if it is, the, the influence is either minimal or it's being covered by the peaches and the oak and the wine, which is fine as far as I'm concerned. So if it's got Brett, wicked, not super notable. And maybe if you're a person who likes funky, no, sorry, who doesn't like funky beers, but likes a bit of wine in their beer, this could be a good one for you. So anyway, uh, Little Beasts, Baldir. Do I have to keep doing this? I could just stop and drink this beer. Maybe, maybe <laughs> Storm State and I could just jump on a Zoom call together. That'd be fine. We don't have to do this, guys. No, we do. I have things I have to tell you. Stick with me. I'm going to have a sip. Mm, 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 mm. I'm going to pour myself a little more, try and get the labels and the branding all in the right direction here. I'm going to top it up because I'm going to be talking and I don't want to have to run out. That'd be awful. Okay. First up, what are we going to eat while we drink this? Well, nothing. Just drink it. It's amazing. You don't need food when you have a beer like this, but I hear you. You're insisting and you are insistent. So, Remembering here that some of the major flavor components here are wine and then oak from the wine barrel, so that's important, and then peaches. The Saison, I'm not totally leaving alone, but for the sake of this experiment, we're thinking about peaches and Chardonnay. And immediately, you're going to go in a couple of directions, but the main one, white protein. We've talked about this. Pork, chicken, fish. Any one of those depending on what you do with it, obviously, is going to work well here. But we always talk about that. I'm also not going to just simply point out that like a really, really greasy triple brie would probably work really well here because the one thing this is lacking is like fatty richness. Um, and in fact, it's the complete opposite of that. So wild juxtaposition. But again, white wine, white cheese, magic. Um, that would work really well, but that's not what we're going to do either. We're not going to do that. We're not going to say something silly like eat fuzzy peach slices. Although I love fuzzy peach slices. Don't get me wrong. What are you going to eat with this? You know what you're going to have with it? I'm going to have a little sip and I'm going to tell you. You're going to drink it. Just, I'm not telling you to mix it here. We're not making a mimosa. You're not putting grapefruit juice in here. You're not putting orange juice in here. You're just drinking this beer, but you're going to drink it with brunch and you're going to drink it with French toast and you're going to have whipping cream on that French toast, some maple syrup, because if you don't put maple syrup on your French toast, we're not friends anymore. And uh, sorry, Erica, if you're still watching, I know sometimes you just put weird Dutch things, but let's be honest, French toast, whipped cream, maple syrup. Oh, hey, Mike, big Mike just joined in. First time viewer, long time listener. I don't know how that works. Um, French toast, and here's what you're going to do. Make a little compote with your peaches. Possibly, instead of using sugar, use maple syrup. Now you got peaches, maple syrup, on your French toast, bit of whipped cream, have that. I'm not telling you to drink beer for breakfast every day, but do it at least once. If you've never had a beer for breakfast, have you really lived? That's the question I ask you. That's what you're going to have with it, and it is going to be magic. French toast, very rich right? Taste wise, not a whole lot going on. Maybe you're going to make it with some brioche. If you're really fancy, just make it with bread. I don't care. French toast, peach compote on it, or just whole peaches if you need to, but make a peach compote. It's really easy. Chop up some peaches, just lightly dust them in a bit of sugar. Um, and then put that in a pot with some maple syrup and just bring it to a light boil. It'll like turn into a sauce. It'll be amazing. It'll blow your mind. Um, the main thing here is maple syrup and peaches on your French toast with this beer magnificent. I really do sound loose as a goose tonight, but I swear to God, I'm not yet. Uh, anyway, this is Balder. I try and stay away from like uh, superlatives like best and stuff like that. Every beer is good in a good situation, in the right situation, let's say. But this beer is good in a lot of situations. <laughs> it might be the best in a lot of situations. This beer is really something. Really something. Mm. I cannot tell you how glad I am. I have more or less what I would call a full glass and what looks like another full glass in that bottle. Also added benefit of drinking out of one of these glasses. If you have a 500 ml bottle, you get three servings out of it. 
Magical. Man, that's good. Okay. I know I just had a sip, but I'm going to have one more. Then we're going to talk a little bit about some other stuff. Stick with me. Mm. My gosh. <sighs> that was something. What a beer. Oh, by the way, where are you going to get it? Little Beasts. I think they might be out. I don't know. I ordered it like two weeks ago, uh, but get on their website, look them up, especially if you're east of the city, you need to be checking them out. If you have not been to Little Beasts and you are out with the Ajax Oshawa way, please stop in. You know, Five Paddles, love them to the moon and back, my homeboys. Check them out too, but check out Little Beasts. So good. So good. And like, do you remember last week I was talking, I had to pick, I couldn't figure out which Imperial Saison that was aged in a barrel I wanted. Cause I had three. That's crazy. And they were like literally all different. I mean, I think functionally probably the same Imperial Saison, but with a total different finish. So not saying, just saying, check them out. Pretty good, pretty good stuff. Also other good beers, but their Saisons are really good. So, uh, Hey, guess what? I'm going to have another sip. Cause, Cause why not? Who cares? This is my show. You can tune out anytime you want. Guess what's happening next week, guys? Monday, the 21st of December. I have found out I will still be off work until January the 11th, unless something changes. And there are many things bad about that, but one good thing is I don't have to think about waking up on Tuesday. So that's positive. Next week, I want to warn you guys, it's the Christmas Spectacular. Because, of course... Christmas happens later that week. Have you got your shopping done? If you haven't, consider buying somebody you love beer or beer-related equipment from a brewery. They could use it. You can figure out which they I meant, the person you're giving it to or the person you're buying it from. Top secret, it's both. Anyway, um, next week is the Christmas Spectacular. It is going to be a real rip-roaring show, not least because... I have secured what I can only describe as the perfect Christmas gift for all the good boys and girls in Toronto beer podcast land. If you've been a good person, I don't know why I got to go boy and girl. I don't care who you identify as. If you've been a good person this year in Toronto beer podcast land, I have a perfect gift for you, but I have even better news. If you've been a bad kid, and I know you're out there. Don't worry about it. This is a podcast that embraces love and offers love regardless of your behavior. It doesn't matter what you've done this year. We have the best Christmas present I can imagine. I'm not going to tell you what it is because that would ruin the Christmas surprise. But I can assure you, if you tune in next Monday, sometime after 9 p.m., it might be a little while. Top secret, it's a person. I'm going to be hanging out with a person who is one of the best people in the world. It might take us a little while to get all the plugs and lines and wires and everything right. So bear with me. If at 920, nothing's happening, just stay strong because it will be worth it. I have the best Christmas present you could ask for. Certainly... I'm going to probably get some pretty awesome gifts from the people I love. And this is going to be right up there with them because this is a person who I love dearly. This person incidentally has known me pretty much longer though. There was a big gap in the middle than virtually anybody else I know. So that's something. Um, that's all I can say. That's all I can say, but tune in next week because it's going to be an absolute monster. Uh, what else is going down? Well, we've got a couple of things to mention, but I am going to have to have another sip of this beer because it's just that good. Mm. I could drink that beer all night. Uh, what else is going down? Hey, top secret. Do you like cask beer? Cask beer was a real big deal a little while ago. It's kind of simmered now. I think it's probably about the level it should be. I don't think everybody needs to make cask beer. Some people make it and they make it really well. Some people make it and they make it good enough that you might think this is as good as cask beer in England. And if it's somebody who's doing that, then they're only 
a little bit worse than the granite who makes the best cask beer maybe in the world. Just going to put that out there right now. The granite has jumped on the bandwagon. Now I have to confess Welly, who also makes fantastic cask beer did this a little while back. And apparently it was calling back to something they did like back in the nineties. Can you believe I can, I was there. No, I wasn't in Wellington. Um, but the granite's doing it now too. It is cask in a box. Now, I think the deal is it's a four liter box. It's a little bit like a wine box, cardboard if you're familiar with the, the format. And, but instead of wine, in it is cask beer. And what they say, you, you buy the box from them, you put it in your fridge. It's got to stay cold. Cask beer is alive. Okay. You shouldn't keep a can of beer like this Canuck, which is empty because I drank it. But if it were sealed, you shouldn't keep it on a warm counter. But it's not going to go off. It's just not going to taste as good as it should. But it won't go off. Cask beer, on the other hand, will. And it might explode. In a box, not violently. Thankfully. But you will have a giant mess on your hands. No, this has to be kept in the fridge. And as soon as you start serving it, there uh, undoubtedly there's going to be a process of like pulling out a spout and more importantly, creating a hole somewhere in the top to allow flow through. Right. I think I haven't actually had one of these before. Maybe not. Maybe the bag just crushes. I think that's the way wine bags work. Maybe that's what happens. Maybe there is no hole, but the point is once you start it, you got four days. Now the good news is it's four liters of beer. I can drink four liters of beer in a day. I'm not endorsing that. I'm just saying it's possible. Certainly in the holiday season, you can get one of them, put it in your fridge, keep it in the fridge. It's not shelf stable, but you don't have to start it yet. But maybe on, on Christmas Eve, you have a little cask ale with your, what do you do on Christmas Eve? Do you have a tradition? I sure do. You could include cask ale in your tradition. So check out the granite. They've got boxes of cask ale, limited time. I don't think this is going to be a reg thing because I bet it's a real nightmare getting cask beer into a bag, uh, but they've done it. And I would highly recommend you checking them out because that's a fantastic thing. So check out the granite, look up their cask beer in a box. If you like a good English ale, I could not say enough good things about their best bitter special. Their, their other beers are great too, but phew, that best bitter special. It's, uh, it's not balder. It's different, but it's also, I think I've called it a desert Island beer. I would seriously consider that being the only beer I could ever drink again. But I would say the same about this. So maybe I'm fickle. Um, but check them out. That's fantastic. Uh, also, as mentioned earlier, buy your beer from a bar near your house if you can, or buy it from a brewery near your house if you can. You know who you don't need to support right now? The government. Top secret. They get paid anyway. So whether you buy it from the LCBO or the brewery or the bar near your house, the LCBO gets more or less the same amount of money regardless. So you're going to support them if you buy alcohol in this province because, hey, apparently it needs to be controlled by the government. Uh, but where the profit goes, that's an important question. And if you can direct that, I mean, it's a tiny little sliver of profit, but that tiny little sliver of profit is more than no profit. So direct that at your local bar and or brewery, uh, and everybody will have a happier holiday season. Uh, I think that's all I wanted to cover. Uh, Hey, yeah, no, that's it. We've been going for half an hour. I got things to do, guys. I got a really tasty beer I got to finish. Going to hang out with the missus. You know, it's the usual Monday night. I'm going to have a sip and I'm going to finish this thought. Mm. So, if you are currently celebrating the Festival of Lights Hanukkah, have a very happy Hanukkah, if I may attempt to butcher what is admittedly a very beautiful sounding language. Chag um, Samiak, I think is how we say that. Blessed Festival, I think is the rough translation there. Have a very, very happy Hanukkah. Uh, if you are a Christmas celebrant, whether it's a, a, um, a westernized version or a, a fairly traditional uh, religious experience, I hope you have a very ha merry, merry Christmas. And regardless... No, we're going to talk before all this. So I didn't even have to wish you Merry Christmas. Hey, screw you people who celebrate Christmas. Suck an egg. I'll wish you well next week. 
In the meantime, to all my Jewish brothers and sisters and non-binary uh, friends, have a very happy Hanukkah. I hope it has been a truly, truly blessed time of year. As a quick aside, my daughter has really enjoyed playing with the dreidel this year. We had a whole family dreidel game after dinner tonight. It meant that we missed packing lunches. So it was that kind of a game. How about that? Uh, anyway, if you're celebrating Hanukkah, a very happy Hanukkah to you. Everybody, regardless of what you're celebrating, even if you don't celebrate Christmas, I got to tell you, the present I've lined up for next week is it's good for everybody. doesn't matter who you believe in or what you believe in or if you don't believe in anything you will like next week's guest. And I would highly encourage you to check it out. Uh, check out Little Beasts. God bless them. Oh, we made the right call, Internet. Baldur was the one. I don't know. I, I No, I have had Freya. Just not recently. Um, holy moly. This is a heck of a beer. Check out Little Beasts. God bless them. Love them. See if, they're, if, if you live in an area where they deliver or if they're doing a delivery, because that's how I got mine. Check it out. Oh, one more quick throw. It turns out a lot of people found it really funny that I ate hot sauce on the show last week. And I did not do this on purpose. But Indie Ale House um, advertised to my Instagram in the most effective way possible. And uh, so I bought some beers off them. So in two weeks time, next week, best Christmas present ever. No other spoilers okay and i will be drinking probably a beer maybe not made by that person i don't want to give away too much here okay it will be a topical beer let's go with that but the week following which is the gap between christmas and new year's i will almost certainly unless things go really awry be drinking the toronto arrows uh beer line out lager made by indie l house now indie l house makes a lot of really crazy cool amazing things like this beers right things with fruit and imperials and barrels and amazing goodness that i could just geek out on hard um but the thing is as you know i'm very one-dimensional and i really like rugby and uh, toronto arrows has partnered with a bunch of different breweries uh the first one they did was salter street now they've partnered with indy indy's made uh line out lager now let's be honest here this is just going to be a straight up lager but if i know jeff it's going to be a damn good one so i've got some of that coming in and what caught my attention was they've packaged their house hot sauces. There's three of them. So I got all three and I got some line out lager and I think some other stuff. I can't quite remember. I thought it was going to get delivered today. It seems like it's going to get delivered tomorrow. I'm very discombobulated, but it is coming in and it certainly will be in by a week, two weeks today, a week Monday. And uh, I thought, well, that could be fun. Maybe next week I'll put up all three and we'll see. And you all can vote. Uh, which hot sauce should I try on the show? I'm sure people will pick the hottest one and that will be hilarious. Um, I'm not, a, I'm, I, I was, I almost said, I'm not a scared. I'm not a scared of hot sauces. I don't know what regionality that phrase comes from, but it is not mine. I'm not afraid of hot sauces and I will be happy to sample another delicious hot sauce. And Hey, if you guys like me tasting hot sauces with beers, I can do that on the reg. It's fine. I love hot sauces, especially if people are sending them to me. Eric will hate it. Cause our, fridge will be full of hot sauces all the time but we did use some on our hello fresh meal uh last night and it uh, it was the spice factory from uh from hurtberry farm um and our faces were on fire and we were crying um lava so that was something true story that happened anywho it's time to shut it down i can never say goodbye i'm having too much fun and this beer is so good anyway i gotta go so be good to each other take care of each other get your shopping done guys and if you can please buy from somebody that you can walk to if you can walk to the store that you're buying it from and it's not a big box please we need all the help we can get out there right now uh be safe be good to each other one last time, if you're celebrating, have a very, very happy Hanukkah. And otherwise, I will talk at you in um, seven days with the best present ever. That's where we'll leave it. Have a good night, kids.